Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a video looking at the current audio improvements that Phil is saying he's making. We're going to go over basically how he has a system set up. We're actually going to take a look at two videos. We're going to take a look at Friday's podcast where he starts going into more detail of what he's actually doing. And then we're going to look at a walkthrough when Phil first got the Focusrite 2i2 and the microphone back in 2015. Uh, this is the same video that I submitted underneath a sock account uh, yesterday to DSP Reacts. We're going to watch more of that video. You're going to see just how bad the setup is. And we'll, we're going to go into an explanation of why his audio is so bad and to look at a 15-year content creator who absolutely has no idea on how his stream actually functions all right so let's just jump right into this well normally i would say welcome to the show but my internet crapped out with the podcast for a second there and now it's coming back but it's weird because it's not my internet because my stream chat continued to work he doesn't understand like th th this is on friday okay we'll, we'll get in a little bit of technical issue here with this youtube when your when your live stream goes down your stream actually still stays up your chat is still there so this was entirely an internet issue for phil like his internet crapped out it wasn't youtube he constantly blames it youtube if you were watching today's podcast this is monday now march 4th and Phil going on about how he blames YouTube for all the video corruptions and stuff not processing or uploading correctly. That's all on Phil's end. That's that's not YouTube. The fact that Phil tries to upload like six, seven videos all at once on his upload rate, rate which is anywhere between 10 to 20 megabits per second, that really isn't good. You should be only uploading one video at a time because your internet is so slow. Um, like on mine, like if I, I've never run into an issue like this, okay? Like what happened today to, or yesterday to Phil, okay? Him explaining this right here, your live stream goes down, your chat still remains there. That key is still processing and it has a time limit that if your stream doesn't come back up, then it shuts down. Phil, this was your internet, okay? Get, get with it already. So it was a YouTube side blip, it looks like. But it should be coming back. Welcome to the show, everyone. Everyone here live, sorry. You're going to have to probably like reload your streams. Uh, everyone who is here uh, on demand, welcome to the show as usual. Today is Friday, the 1st of March, 2024. People are now asking me to replay the intro. <laughs> what a unique intro, people are saying. Yeah, it's, it, that, that was definitely YouTube because it, it dropped and then it came right back. And... I didn't do anything, and basically I'm looking, and my chat never dropped, and my browser connection never dropped. Like, my internet didn't go out. That was a YouTube blip on their end. So, sorry about that, those who are there live, but it should be working now. Yeah, if no, you reload the stream, it should fits, work. My webcam is looking choppy on my end. I don't know if it looks choppy on your end, guys. Um, boy, we're just going to start today with... This is supposed to be HD, and... It's blurry because he doesn't have his camera configured properly. He doesn't understand that his camera, it's a 930E now that he has, only does 1080p 30. It doesn't do 1080p 60. So, yeah. Tons of technical issues, won't we? Here, here's what I'll do. Let me see if I can fix this. Oops, that's not, I clicked completely on the wrong thing. Uh, hold on. Remember, 15 year content creator. Where's the resolution? There it is. So, let's do this. That massively dips my resolution and should readjust the frame rate. See that? Hello. Actually, it didn't. It looks like the frame rate is still choppy. What if I go like full 480p? It still looks choppy. So you know what? It's either the computer, which I don't think it is. I think it's my, uh, I think it's my preview window is looking choppy today for some reason. Yeah. Whatever. That's... I don't. This is why people do maintenance to their PCs, Phil. Right. You've had this computer since 2014. You've refused to update it, defrag it, clean it in any way, shape, or form. And your solution is to beg for a new computer because you're just too lazy to do any maintenance to it. Because you don't know how, right? That, that's what it basically comes down to. I don't care. All right. Snort. Yeah, everyone's saying it looks smooth on there. It's weird. Sometimes my preview window 
looks real, really bad. And then people are like, no, the actual video looks good. Okay, anyway, welcome to the show, everyone. It's L Look at how the shirt just, it doesn't fit. Like, it just doesn't fit him. And of course, he's got his Zelda jammies on underneath. No socks, no, no whatsoever. Because he got butt hurt by fucking LTG last year. When LTG told him that he needs to get a new wardrobe and clean up his fuck himself, right? What does he do? He goes and shops in the kids section. It's March 1st. And obviously, we are in the midst of a big new release, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I played it all day yesterday, okay? Some interesting info to cover here for you all today um, in regards to a lot of things. Now, the first thing I would like to address today, <clears throat> okay? You guys have always said, always said that I had an issue with my audio. That for some reason, the audio on my streams was always very, very low. Okay? And I tried tackling this over the years. I couldn't really figure it out. So, last weekend, actually, it was. All right? People said, can you just do something to turn up your mic? And I said, I'm nervous. If I turn up my mic, what's going to end up happening is the audio is going to get blown out. Because my device here, I think they call it a, a, an audio interface. Uh, it's an amp and DAC fill. Focus right through I2 amp and DAC, like an audio interface. You're just doing that to sound smart. It says it right on the fucking top that it's a Scarlet 2 I2. Um, basically shows as I'm talking that I'm kind of at the level. And basically right now, okay, if I talk even a little loud, like right now it's showing as orange. And if I go even a little louder than that volume level, it goes red. All right. Yeah. Because you have everything turned up to 100%. And we'll actually prove this here. We'll, we'll, I'll show you exactly what Phil did to get his audio boosted in the first place. And we're going to explain the ins, the pros and cons of doing that. Mostly cons. Like, you don't want to blow your audio out like Phil has. Like, with Phil... Everything in the area gets picked up, right? You can hear the planes flying from overhead. You can hear him shuffling around in the office. You can hear Cat and Tyrone going at it in the room next next door, right? He doesn't... For a 15-year content creator, Phil has been using OBS since 2013. So 11 years. He has still not figured out on how to use filters. Like some of the easiest shit that you can do within OBS to help improve your audio, Phil's just not going to do. That's, that requires work and effort, and Phil will never put any type of work or effort back into Brunel Productions. So I said, if I adjust it, I'm afraid it's gonna blow out the mic and you're gonna hear it sound a lot more noise in the mic. It's not, I'm not gonna sound as clear, but people wanted me to do it, so I did. The good news is my overall audio level has gone up. And people are actually saying that this week, all the videos I did sounded better because my overall audio is up. However, I have noticed there is blowout in the audio. So, for example, you ready for this? Everyone get ready because it's going to be loud. I'm going to do some testing. Okay, you ready? Please, so prepare. I'm going to talk. I'm going to be talking very loud in a few moments. Now, I have, if you can see this on the screen, right here at the bottom, that is my volume. I only have my volume set to 20%. There's a reason behind that. I use audio equipment that is more professional than what supposedly Phil uses. So a high, I have a higher impedance headphone, which means it uses more power and I get a much louder volume from my headphones at a lower volume setting. I don't typically go above 30%, especially when I'm gaming, because it really gets loud not that it's blown out and distorted what what phil is stating here is his volume his audio isn't getting blown out he's having clipping issues that's what it is called he doesn't know what he's talking about and he doesn't understand the limitations of his setup and and we're going to get into that shortly okay three two one all right so you see now that i'm talking like this it sounds blown out doesn't it See when I and that's why you enable a limiter because then you won't end up with clipping from the audio fill, right? You can enable that. Let's bring over OBS. Let, 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 let's bring this up here, okay? So this is my, these are my filters for OBS, okay? I'm just going to drag this over. 
Okay, now with my filters, you can see that I'm not using any noise suppression or a noise gate. That's because I currently have NVIDIA Broadcast installed. Okay, now with NVIDIA Broadcast, that allows me to basically use AI compression within the 3080 Ti or a 2080 or 40 or 4000 series, 2000 series, 3000 series. They all support NVIDIA Broadcast. If you want to use something older, say for a 700 series, a 900 series or a 1000 series from NVIDIA, you would then download RTX Voice. That is what it is called for, um, for those video cards, right? Now, I like... When I do these types of videos, I like to use NVIDIA Broadcast because I do find that their AI uh, suppression, their AI noise gate works a lot better than what OBS has to offer. But then I also enable a limiter, a compressor, and a three-band equalizer. As you can see, it's very simple to add these. I don't use gain because my microphone has a gain control on it. Now, recommendations are around 50 to 75% for the gain. You don't want to go over that. Phil is at over a hundred percent at this point okay because and we'll show that here what he has it set to phil's mic doesn't have a lot of adjustability outside of using the software that came with the focus rate 2i2 so again like all you have to do to enable this is you click on the three little dots next to your audio where your microphone auxiliary is and you just go down to filters so this is the window that pops up and you can add the filters that you want to now you can do this for whatever like your game capture and everything you can add a limiter so that your game sound doesn't get very loud right you can adjust your game sound through obs as well this stuff that phil just doesn't understand nor does he care about right all phil wants to do and this has been the entire time for 15 years that phil has streamed on youtube and twitch and lip tv was just plug it in turn it on and hope to god it works if any Thing goes wrong and Phil actually has to do something it's a complete write-off okay so it's very easy to enable like noise suppression a noise gate a filter and everything like that right like you just got to add it and away you go that's all you do right now you can adjust this and everything like that but you can see I yelled into my microphone like Phil did I didn't get any clipping because I have my limiter enabled right that doesn't that's going to prevent my audio from going over its limit when I talk louder when I'm like this and I'm like, oh my god, oh, 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 what the hell, what's going on, blah, 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 blah. It, blo it sounds blown out when I do that, doesn't it? Like it sounds way too loud, correct? And it didn't used to. It used to be a lot less of that, okay? So basically if I talk at a normal calm level, everything's perfectly fine. But if I go loud, you see what happened? And people are agreeing with me in the chat. It basically blows out when I raise my volume level. Okay. What I'd like to do today is test something. Okay? So what I want to do, I want to overall... It's called clipping. Is that true, David? I guess there we David's go. saying Finally. the technical audio term is called clipping. Okay. What I'd like to do is lower my microphone level back down to where it had previously been, which is not that far off from where I am now. But what I want to do is I want to use OBS to artificially increase the decibel level of my microphone. Now, remember, in the past, Phil said this wasn't possible until a dent told him how to do it, right? And we've said this for years. I've shown this before on prior videos that it is very easy to adjust OBS. Now, I'm not 100% an expert on audio, okay? If you're looking for a detractor that knows a lot more about audio, I would suggest talking to Logan K, one half of Taken L's. Um, he used to work in the industry for like broadcasting and everything so he has more knowledge he actually has a video i will link it down in the description you could take a look there and see how he has his audio set up right he he goes into far more detail about the actual inner workings of microsoft or microsoft microphone filters and everything like that for obs and getting everything set up accordingly it's a lot of trial and error, realistically. Like, Phil will state here that he's not able to actually test this by himself. You can. All you have to do is set up an unlisted stream or a private stream and adjust your settings on the go. It's very easy to do, right? That That's what I've done mine in the past, right? And, or have a friend, like, have Cat come on 
on her PC or whatever and listen to it as you adjust the audio and let her tell you how good it is. It is very simple, but again, that requires work. That's right. It requires Phil to actually have to do work. And Phil doesn't want to do that unless he can make money off it. That's why we're getting this tech segment at the beginning of the show, right? He doesn't know what he's doing, so he's hoping somebody in chat is going to explain it to him on how to do it. Then Phil's going to insult them, belittle them, and then he's going to make the changes himself and make it look like he did it. And I want to see if that fixes it. Okay, because if that's the case, we could still have louder audio on the stream, but it won't blow out. All right, so can we test it? Shall we? All right, well, let's do this. So I'm going to lower the microphone a little bit now. All right, from where it is. So let's do like maybe about this. Hold on. My, my audio level is going to go down. Okay, so everyone prepare for this. Here it goes. Okay, so I just lowered the mic and now I'm talking. And as I'm talking, it's never hitting orange or red. It's always green. But now my overall mic volume is down, correct? Okay, do you want to know why I your overall mic volume is down, Phil? You're sitting a foot to two feet away from your microphone. When you look at podcasters, let's bring up my YouTube here, because I watch and listen to a lot of podcasts, right? Now, you can see Joe Rogan here, right? Joe Rogan is sitting within three inches, three to six inches of your microphone. So am I. I'm sitting within two to three or three to six inches of my microphone. You can look at other people on his podcast, right? Where's Bad Friends? Bad Friends is a good example. I listen to Bad Friends all the time. Bad Friends is fucking hilarious. Here it is. So this is Bobby and Andrew, right? You can see everybody is sitting within three to six inches of the microphone. That's what you should be doing on a podcast. It's not really recommended to sit far back when you're doing a podcast, like 12 inches to 24 inches, Phil, right? And Phil sits back because Phil doesn't want to sit up at a desk or anything like that. Phil does have a boom arm that allows for his microphone. He can position it differently so that he doesn't have to sit. Like you can see how far away he is sitting from his microphone compared to any other podcasters. That's not good, Phil. That's why you have to increase your gain and your mic volume in order to pick it up. You have a bad setup, and you always have had a bad setup, so you just blow everything out of proportion and jack it all up. A lot lower now, correct? Okay, now I'm, here's what I'm going to do. Okay, hold on. People are saying it's a lot lower now. Okay, let's try something. So if I go into OBS settings, and if I go to my mic... And I'm going to increase the mic, okay, in the settings. Five, what should we do? Five, try five decibels. Let's try five decibels, okay? Okay, testing. How does it sound now? Because I've just artificially increased my mic level by five decibels. And I'm wondering if that increased it enough that it sounds similar to what it was. Right, and it didn't make any difference, right? Now... Shit, sorry, my bad, turning on. Discord was not my plan. Do I any messages? No. Okay, so we can actually bring that up here. So we'll bring up advanced properties. So here we go. So this is the advanced properties. This is what Phil is adjusting. So I typically run minus five right? Phil is trying to boost his volume. Now, there's a reason why Phil's volume is just low to begin with, and we'll get into that here shortly. But boosting this is a really good way to actually do things, right? And for me, like I'm looking at my OBS, I am just slightly, slightly going into the yellow on OBS, which is perfectly fine. You really don't want to go into the red on OBS. Uh, that's when you're going to get a lot of clipping and everything like that. But you want to try to manage your audio to that point. Now, we're 15 years in the making here, and Phil is finally doing this. Most of us knew how to do this when we started, right? We would research and everything on how we wanted to have our stream sounding and everything like that. And even over the, the last two years that I've been doing this, I still learn new stuff every day. I like to listen to videos and everything like that. You guys saw my YouTube. I like listening to videos where I can improve my stream setup, right? Things I can think of, like, what do I want to do? Like, I'm in the middle right now of just doing an upgrade because I'm going to be starting a second channel. Uh, kind of sort of related to Phil, but not really. 
I'll get into that later more when I'm ready to do it. But, like, I have some hardware coming this week that is going to really improve my audio. I am going to a bigger sound card, and I am going to an XLR mic that I don't have to use through USB, and there are limitations. When you are using an XLR microphone, then using a Focusrite 2i2 and then back into USB kind of negates the benefits of XLR. And I'll explain why when we get later on in the video. But it shouldn't blow out now. How does it sound? The same? It didn't increase? Try 10 decibels? Okay, let's try 10 decibels. Let's try that. Right now it's at 5. Let's go to 10. See, like, you shouldn't be able to hear all the clicking and everything in the background, right? You don't hear mine. Like, I have a very clicky keyboard. I have the uh, Razer Black Widow 4 now, the new one. I just picked up and everything with the clicky clack keys. And then I have my optical mouse, which also clicks really hard. But you guys can't hear that happening in the background. Plus, I have my furnace, like... You've seen my setup in my home theater room, which is basically my basement. I have my furnaces there. Currently, my furnace is running, and you cannot hear it whatsoever because I have everything limited. I have a noise gate. I have noise suppression, everything set up. So you don't hear any of that background noise. That is way, way beyond Phil, but we've already shown how easy it is to enable those features. Okay, now it's saying it's 10 decibels. Does that sound any better? It doesn't sound How does that better. sound? Let's test. I'll talk a little more. How does that sound? Better? Do I sound much louder now? That's a good level. That's a decent improvement. Okay. The key is we need to we need to find the right balance. And it's funny because people are like, why don't you just do like a whole stream of this? Or why don't you do it off stream? First of all, it's impossible. So you can tell when Phil turns his head and everything there. Because the mic that he's using, and we'll show it here shortly. It's right here. This microphone is a cardioid mic, so basically you have a heart shape that comes from, a come, comes from the condenser, the microphone itself, and that's where the audio is gathered from. When Phil moves away, because he sits so far away from his microphone, when he turns his head, or if he's not talking directly at the mic, then you get that where he sounds very, very quiet, because, again, his setup is so poor. Right, like it's just like his background, everything like that. Everything is just bad. It's it's poorly done. It's done in a rush, so that he could get back up and running, and beg for money. That's basically Brunel Productions in a nutshell. Possible to do it off stream. It's easier to get live feedback from you guys than it is for me to try to do it offline, recording, playing back, recording, playing back. Right. Number two, why you don't need to record. Right, like I said, just set up an unlisted stream or a private stream. Give one of the dents the link to the stream, and they can help you do the audio feel. It's it's not difficult. They can talk to you in chat as you're making your adjustments. Why would I do a whole stream? <laughs> we have a podcast. Like this is the whole point. We're here live together. Now is the opportunity to do this stuff. Right, like no, this is the best Phil. time. This you're here is... live. You're eager. To this is your podcast, okay? You're supposed to do the schedule. You're supposed to do the Begment. You're supposed to do DSP News and DSP's Day Off. Then you're supposed to do shout-outs. Then you're supposed to do Q&A. That is your podcast. The podcast is not meant for you to try and do technical troubleshooting, right? You do this off-stream. If I have a problem prior to me starting the stream, I'm working on it prior to me starting the stream, right? Like, remember... Phil has what, four hours, three hours in between streams that he could do his troubleshooting, he could do stuff like that, right? Like, this is your business, Phil, right? This is your lifeline. If this fails, you're on Skid Row. You are you and you and Cat are living on what's that avenue called in Seattle where all the bums and the hookers are? That's where you're going to end up, Phil, or you're going to end end up with Linda and Dave back in Connecticut, one of the few to help you want things to get better right so what says now ambient noise is now noticeable you're right see this is the thing like <laughs> what yeah yeah you're right okay phil enable noise gate and a noise filter well I, I showed you how to do that right let's do it again here click the three dots next to your microphone 
Go to filters. Up pops the filter window. Add noise gate. Add noise suppression. Add limiter. Make sure there is a... Um, how can I put it? There, There is a method at which you should add these filters. Your noise suppression and your noise gate should be at the end, right? So you're going to want to have like... Because you, you don't want to limit... What's the best way? What did Logan say? I think limiter is third from last, right? So it would be like this. You'd have your compressor, your three-band equalizer, then your limiter, then your noise gate, and everything like that. I think that's how it works, right? Because then you want to noise suppress and noise gate your overall microphone, okay? So there is a method. There, there, There is a pattern that you should follow when doing it. Like... Getting rid of ambient noise is easy. Everybody, this it's one of the most easiest things, right? If you if you have AI support, right? And I don't recommend that everybody uses this, this because I'm not gaming right now, because my GPU is being used for the NVIDIA broadcast. Okay, it does use quite a bit of GPU. It can use up to forty to sixty percent of even like a forty ninety when you're doing your uh, noise suppression through the video card. Otherwise, you would just use filters built into the OBS, and those filters themselves, they use CPU cycles rather than using your video card. Okay, so it's actually very easy to remove ambient noise. And what's funny is he has all this, like this is noise suppression foam, which does absolutely fuck all because we can hear everything that goes on in the office. But he's blocking the noise suppression phone with all this in front of it, right? So that noise suppressing foam is completely useless for, for Phil. It doesn't help anything. It doesn't help to remove the audio bouncing off the wall from his window, right? We can hear everything that goes on in the snort fort within snort them itself, right? What is the happy medium, right? You can't have it both ways. Now you're probably hearing, I don't have a fan on today, but- You, you can have it both ways, Phil. That's, that's noise suppression and noise gate. Like it's, again, you're a 15 year content creator. You're just learning this stuff now because you're so fucking lazy. You're the laziest content creator on the planet, Phil. That's what you are. You're the laziest content creator on the planet. You refuse to put any money back into your streams, right? All your money is for WWE Champions, Jin, and DoorDash. That's, that, that was, those are your priorities. Everybody knows that. There's no reason to lie about it. You know, that's obvious. You don't manage your money very well, even though you have a finance degree, you're bankrupt, right? You don't put any money back into Brunel Productions whatsoever. You will instead beg for a new computer, a $2,500 camera, professional studio lighting, blah, 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 right? And then hope to God that one of the dents is going to win the lottery and buy you everything you need for your streams right instead like if you put money away since you've been begging for the computer for the last two years you could have that three thousand dollar computer fill already right even if you put just a hundred bucks away for a month phil that's all you have to do hundred dollars a month for the last three years you would have had that three thousand dollar computer right and you would have been ready to go you would have fucked that up pretty quick because you wouldn't know how to use it you still wouldn't be using it for gaming and if that even with that being said show to that being said you have the mini PC. Like, Phil, when, right now with doing Profit OS, I am filming Profit OS using the mini PC. I have the exact same mini PC as you, Phil. Okay? I bought that just so I can make fun of you. Right? I can play Street Fighter Six on it, no problem. Right? I, I do all my streaming and all my video recording from that. Just tonight I'm doing it from Titan because I just want to show how audio should be set up. Today, you can, now you can probably hear all, like, my PC, right? You can probably hear the PC fans and stuff on over you here. You hear that always. Fit. Probably. That's probably what you're hearing. And there's nothing I can do about that. You know, I don't know what how to fix that. Uh, I, I said, Phil, noise suppression, noise gate. Like, I, I, I don't understand. Like, remember, 15-year content creator. Noise suppression has been a thing within OBS since 20... 2017, I believe, is when they enabled noise suppression via the filters. And even before that, I think there was plugins that you can do to get noise suppression working. And there's something that, that he's just... He still doesn't know about. 
but every detractor, every other podcaster out there, every other content creator knows about it. People that have been streaming longer than Phil know about it. it. You know, if you want louder audio on the stream, you're going to end up hearing more of the ambient noise. You can add a background noise reduction to OBS to remove background noise. I mean, we, we could try. Uh, I, we would have to figure that out, so we would have to, you know... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's three clicks. The three little dots next to the microphone. Click on filters. Add a filter. Noise gate, noise suppression. Done. Walk away. That's a, that's all that needs to be done. That That is how difficult it is for Phil Brunel. <laughs> well, oh... Now, that was interesting when I said, ha, 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 look. So what's happening there? Does that sound terrible? Because it maxed out the audio. You want to know why, Phil? You were leaning in. Now, let's discuss this, okay? Phil is leaning in right now, right? This new pop filter that Phil has. It's called a pop filter, Phil, not a pop guard. Your name is literally in the name of the device, okay? The bad thing about this pop filter is that it allows... You can see here in the top, it allows air and volume in, okay? Now, if you look at, let's bring up, uh, I want to look for podcasters using pop filters. Okay, cool. So you can see here, right? Everybody has the pop filter, the big one, right? The big round one. The reason being, like, let's bring up this one right here, right? So he's got a big pop filter and everything like that. This guy has a big pop filter and everything, right? He's all set to go. You have musicians in studios that use the pop filter. As you can see, Phil's got this one that wraps around the microphone. Some dent probably recommended it to him. This pop filter is not good because it allows volume and air to get in from over top. And because Phil is sitting above his microphone talking down into it, it is not a good setup. Again, it's, it's poorly set up. This pop filter does not, unless you're sitting right, if the microphone is right in front of your mouth, and you're talking into the center of that pop filter, that is the only way the air and the volume is not going to get around that pop filter unfortunately the way phil has this set up we can hear more hissing and more popping in his audio because it's a really bad filter right now what phil should do is phil should have how could he have this set up let's think here now phil is using a boom arm it's more of a what is it it's more of a tripod like boom arm rather than something that attaches to your desk You've all seen me, mine. I use the Blue Yeti boom arm for my Blue Yeti microphone. And I love it. I can position it wherever I want. Like right now, it just comes down over top of my monitor. And I'm just sitting right next to it here. I'm within four to six inches, right? And my audio is fine. I'm just talking normally like I normally do, right? I'm not screaming and yelling. Even if I did, it'd be filtered out because I got the limiter in there. So this new pop filter that Phil got is really bad. Okay, it's not a very good pop filter for what Phil wants to use it for. He should really just buy a new large round pop filter. But the reason why he's doing it is because of how bad his setup is, right? Because he can't see his notebook that's sitting in front of him and everything. It, it's just really poorly set up because he just, he didn't take the time to set it up and see like, how can I do this so I don't have cables running all over the farm? We're going to take a look at that shortly. It did. It went full red when I did that. Yeah, that was a plane outside. You definitely heard the plane. I'm curious. Let's try this. All right. So I'm talking from over here as I'm going to do when I'm playing a game. Thank you. How does the commentary sound now? It's a lot lower. Let's, let's do the time. <laughs> How does that sound? It sounds bad. I'm just curious. <clears throat> it doesn't sound bad. The dents aren't going to tell you, Phil, because they don't want to hurt your feelings. Still sounds fine. Sounds a little distant, but fine. That's okay. Because now what we're doing is we're trying to adjust. Now that the, the volume level's up, now you got to adjust, you know. Um, some people are saying, well, well, the suggestion has been made. See, right now, the microphone's literally right in front of me as I'm talking. 
no, so it's, it's not, perfect it's for the podcast. Below but you. when I'm playing games, I turn like this. And some people are saying, why don't you put the microphone here? Well, there's a couple reasons. Number one, if I put the microphone here, it literally is in front of the camera. Like, it would be unavoidable. You would see this arm blocking the, the webcam. It would be in the shot. I don't it. have, like, a giant Position it studio still. level microphone situation where I can, like, have something coming off the ceiling. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is all he needs to do. And we're going to show this in the video here shortly because I don't want to listen to him anymore about this. With his tripod, he can just move it over here and then have the mic come down here. Like, literally in front of him, it won't matter. Right? You look at other podcasters again. Let's bring up, uh, let's bring up Bad Friends. Right? Let's look at images of Bobby and Andrew. You have no respect. Literally, you can see the boom arm and everything, right? That's that's how it works. Like those boom arms sit right in front of them, right? And most of us that do this, you're gonna be able to see our microphones, our setups, and everything like that, right? I can bring up here. Let's bring up Tim the Tap. Tim the Tat. Now I watch a lot of Timmy Timmy testicles. I watch Doctor Disrespect, and you can see. God, Tim, that beard, dude, bro. You fat fuck. Okay, so like here, you can see his boom arm and everything within his microphone. And when Tim is talking and everything, Tim will move it closer to himself and everything like that. When you, and plus Tim has a way, way better setup than what Phil has, because you know Tim's an actually really, really good content creator. Although. His head's about to pop, and he's fat as shit, but, you know, whatever. Each to their own. I'm fat too, Tim, don't worry. That's Phil's mic, we're gonna get into that. Okay, so I don't want to listen to this shit anymore. We're gonna move on to this office setup. Now, this office setup is back from 2015. This has primarily remained unchanged. Uh, there are a few minor details. He no longer has the casting couch in there. He's got a shitty little gaming chair, plus he has all... Now he has that sound foam back here that does absolutely fuck all. And he's got his gaming chair. But realistically, everything else here is pretty much the same. So you can see the boom arm he has for the microphone, right? So that can be easily moved over to the side. So that the microphone is in front of him at all times, right? And it wants to be about... Again, you want to be within six inches of the microphone. You want to be able to talk where the cardioid uh, is coming out, you want to be able to talk within that portion. So let's take a listen to this. Hello everyone, DSP here with a special vlog. This is a walkthrough of my new office setup. Now that I'm using a far more professional setup when it comes to the audio that I'm using to capture for my game playthroughs, my vlogs, and more, okay? So for those of you who haven't been paying attention, this past week, I actually purchased new equipment based off of the fact that we hit all of our goals during the month of March on my Patreon account. If you haven't checked it out, of course, it's patreon.com forward slash darksidephil. And one of the major things that I wanted to do was improve the quality of my audio, stop the big audio jumps that we hear during gameplay, stop a lot of the atmospheric noise that you hear during gameplay, and also for vlogs, make it a lot better sounding, okay? So I did two things. The first thing I did is I ordered a preamp. This is the Focusrite Scarlet 2i2 preamp unit. It is for XLR microphones, which means it's this type of connection, a professional studio-grade microphone. Now, it's not really... It does have XLR support, but it's more for instrumental. Things like guitar. Uh, there's actually a bunch of uh, detractors that actually use this for instrument use. Uh, shout out to Fantastic Mr. Sam and Peace of Peace. They both use this. Uh, Sam actually uses a 2i4. Peace uses the 2i2. I think Peace has the Gen 3, I want to say. As well, Old Man Alt Insider, that old fucker, he uses this as well. Right? Him, he bought this and I contacted both our Peace, I contacted Sam, and I contacted Alt because I wanted to know why did they choose the 2i2? How do they have it set up, and how does it function for them? Now, Sam and Peace both play the banjo, so they use it for instrument use primarily. Peace does not use this for content creation whatsoever. Uh, he uses, what is it, what did he say? He uses uh, 
more of a, a gaming uh, type of uh, microphone. I think he uses the same one that Jad does, actually. Uh, Sam does use this for content creation. He does have the... Uh, he does have it for XLR and everything like that, but Sam understands the limitations behind why this of the 2i, but Sam's a little bit more powerful as 2i4. Alt Insider actually ran into the issue that we are going to be discussing here, which is called USB Crosstalk. And we'll get into that here shortly. We're just going to look over this video here because it's really going to show you just how poorly Phil's overall setup is. And remember, Phil's setup is a lot worse now. Like, we've seen recent shit from within the office there, quotation office. Uh, it's really just the closet. It's really, really bad now, right? Like, it's the amount of dust. You're going to actually see some dust in here, and you're just going to fucking freak the fuck out. Microphone, all right? I ordered that, and I ordered a new microphone. I already did an unboxing of this microphone earlier this week, so if you want to see the full unboxing of all the stuff from this box, but you can watch that. It's already on the King of Hate vlogs, but here it is, the new microphone, and the Audio-Technica 2035 cardoid mic, okay? And what I've done here, I know it's a hideous mess, because yes, my office is a hideous mess. Uh, what I've done here is I have made a, a semi almost kind of, of studio where I can do ongoing gameplay with commentary. I could do vlog studio. <laughs> like Phil, my setup is so clean compared to this. Like you, you want to look at clean setups. You should take a look at fantastic. Mr. Sam's so like fantastic. Mr. Sam's his setup is just, I love his lighting. I love the room layout and everything like that. It's just perfect, right? Like just, nice and clean and organized then you look at shithead phil here and it's just like holy shit like, like look at this look at look at the amount of dust that's on top of this thing this is only a year like remember this is a year almost a year after he purchased the computer do you think in that time he has ever pulled everything out of the room vacuum dusted cleaned it all off no do you think he's done that in the past nine years since he did this video no Right, that's, but, but, but wait, like it gets better. Blogging, I could do podcasts, I could do whatever I want to do with this setup, okay? Here's my 1080p webcam, Logitech webcam, I forget the model number, I don't know if it says on the front. That's the old 920. Now Phil has a 930E that he got from the Island Boys, you guys remember those guys, the Dutch Brothers, right? That 930E is identical to the 920, the only difference is one, the color wheel is adjusted out of the box in the 930E. That's why you see kind of better color, better brightness on Phil's web camera. The 920 can do identical if Phil knew how to set it up properly. And two, the 930E supports a wider viewing angle. With the uh, with the Logitech 920, I think it's maximum is 75. On the 930E, the maximum is 90. So those are the only differences between the webcams. That is it. So basically the only real difference is the added viewing angle. There's nothing else different between his old cam and his new cam. It's just that he didn't know how to configure his old camera properly. There is the car, no it doesn't, it doesn't say, darn. I know it is 1080p though. We got that attached to my tripod right in front of me. So face first where I sit right here on my love seat. Then we've got a professional Samson Tech a uh, uh, professional uh, studio mic, or studio mic, studio stand, mic stand, okay? It's called boom arm, Phil. Boom arm, okay? That's where your microphone attaches to. You can level up and down. So you can see that he's got this kind of tripod. It's not really a professional, Phil. It's, it's just a regular fucking boom arm tripod. That's all it is, right? You can buy these anywhere. Phil can move this around, right? And better position the mic. That pop filter that he's got on here is great. That is an excellent pop filter. I think it's kind of doubled. I think there's a filter here and there's a filter in the front. So it's actually very good for taking out the pops and the hisses or whatever. The one he has now is horrible because he talks down into the mic. So it kind of gets, it doesn't block anything. All that, all that sound is just coming down into here like this. You can see the condenser, right? Right there for Phil's microphone. So Phil's talking down into it, which is not good. It needs to be in front of his face within three to six inches. That's where it should be. Okay. Attached to that, we've got 
the, what I believe they call this is the shock guard, where you put your microphone, the audio techno microphone goes inside of it, and it's mounted onto the end. It's not called a shock guard, it's called shock mount. There? Okay. Now, what this is made for, that if you hit your microphone, like if you hit the boom arm or whatever, you don't hear that in your microphone. Now, Phil, again, just poorly set it up, poorly connected it to the... This boom arm obviously wasn't made for this setup right phil would need to look for a boom arm that more supports the at 2035 um that way the shock the shock fill the shock mount can be properly set up right this looks like it's attached directly into the shock mount which isn't good because in the shock mount it's not going to work properly for when you're hitting your microphone but then we lose it on bingo because we don't hear the microphone bump right okay and this is called the pop filter this filter is for when you say P's and S's in the microphone, it stops them from becoming blurred. And also, of course, for spitting, for people who spit too much when they talk. I don't know if I do or not, because I never really st stood in front of someone no, and talked to them for slur. five hours like I did. You, you, you slur due to probably the microstrokes you've had in your alcoholism. That, that That's all you do. ...do on my streams. But there you have it. Of course, that wire is an XLR wire. Unfortunately, I bought a 25-foot one that came with the kit, which I didn't realize. goes down there, and it comes up here to this guy. Here he is. This is the Focusrite Scarlet. Uh, what's it called? The 2i? The 2i, too. You can see. Now, you can see as Phil's talking, it's turning green, right? Phil is not even sitting close to the mouse, or the mouse, the microphone, and it's picking it up because he doesn't have anything filtered or anything, right? Now, you can see here the gain button right you can see this gain button here is set to zero this gain button here is set to 100 percent okay this is not good you don't want to have your gain maxed out because it will cause audio clipping okay now on my microphone i use a, a yeti x pro i have a gain control on it i have my gain control right now set to 50 percent my microphone volume within windows let's bring it up here Send. recording if i go to my yeti x i'm only at 70 percent for my microphone and then this really doesn't matter this doesn't do much at all well changing the audio for your microphone within the nvidia uh broadcast itself right now it's just using the one from it basically mimics this audio here and so you can see my audio is not jumping like crazy right but you can still hear me just fine. It's clean, it's clear, it's warm. It's blinking, because my microphone can hear me. It's picking up the audio from my voice. It's got input for multiple mics. If you wanted to mix multiple mics together onto a stream or a broadcast. I wouldn't recommend this. Now, this is the Focusrite 2i2 Gen 1. Okay. Now, this knob here controls the headphones. This knob here controls the rear out on the back. Because if you want to add like two speakers through rear out stereo speakers, you can do that. This controls that volume. The only option for controlling here, this right here is set to line in, which is correct. The other option is to set it to instrumental. Instrumental adjusts some power settings and everything like that. Now, this supports 48 volt phantom power. That's what XLR runs on. Now, you have to be careful with the cables. You got to make sure your cables support it. Phil's got a pretty long run, 25 feet. I don't know why he would have purchased a cable that long. Um, the cables do matter when it comes to transferring the power. Now, if you were to put in a second microphone, now, when I was originally going to do this video is when Cat and him are doing the co-op play for Dundogo Island, whatever the fuck it was called for that Yakuza game. If Phil got, say, an identical mic, say he went and bought another AT2035, if he plug it in here, it would cut the power in half because these ports share 48 volt phantom power. So it would then drop to 24 volt. Now, you have to be careful when dealing with 48 volt phantom power for microphones. Some microphones will still work at a lower power rating. This one here, the AT2035, actually works between 11 to 52 volts that's what that works on now i do this in quotations because this the focus right 2i2 gen 1 is very limited for power based on its spec it only runs on usb 2 usb 2 cannot provide enough wattage 
to power everything that Phil has. And the downside to this is, and we're going to get into it, we're going to actually look at Phil's system. Phil has had a lot of USB problems. Uh, currently, right now, in today, Phil has stated that the front USB do no, no longer work on his motherboard. And plus, he has ports on the back of his motherboard that no longer work either. Now, oh, I just noticed that. Look at how he's got this daisy chain. So there's a power bar. There's an adapter. Everything is daisy chain. So Phil is limited mainly by the power that's provided to this device. That's why it sounds so low. Phil cannot get the full function out of this setup because it's not meant to do the amount of power that Phil is expecting it to do. It's very, very limited to what he can and can't do on his system. Now, there are four generations of the Focusrite 2i2. The fourth gen, the latest generation, actually has a separate AC adapter for power. The other three generations get power through USB. The other two, Gen 2 and Gen 3, both use USB 3, which can provide more power, usually double that of USB 2. It's still going to be, depending on how many USB devices, and we'll get into that, we're going to jump more into the USB crosstalk, which I've spoken to about in prior videos, and we'll explain all of that for you. Cash, you could do that, and it is USB. Unfortunately, the USB cable it came with was incredibly short, like the, one of the shortest ones I've ever seen in my life. It barely reaches from the back of this unit to the back of my PC. Now, this has to be here because on the fly, I need to be able to adjust volume levels, okay? So that's why it has levels. to be there. And it that. is quite annoying that the USB cord it came with was small. So if anything, the one upgrade I might do is get a longer USB cord, okay? So that's why I said, and of course I got everything around me. My iPad and iPhone are usually next to me. There's my Wii U controller on the floor. That's my 3DS for when I do 3DS capture. That's my headphones, my slippers that I took off. The headphones come over here to my receiver. This is my Astro A40 uh, receiver unit that goes over here. It's not a receiver, Phil, okay? It's, it's, it's a converter. It converts Adobe Digital, full digital signal into stereo for your headphones. That's all it does, okay? We've been over this. We actually have this here. Let's bring this up. Astro Oh, it's no longer available. Damn it. Okay, I'll delete that bookmark after. So, it, it, it's not a receiver, Phil. It, it's just a converter. It converts digital audio to stereo, analog. Here to my console, whatever console I'm currently playing. Of course, these are all my consoles hooked up with wires. This is my uh, HD... Uh, HDCP bypass for the PS3. It's the only console that still uses HDCP copy protection. All consoles use HDCP copy protection, Phil. It's just that with the latest HDCP copy protection, a lot of them know, like when you plug it in for streaming and everything like that, that it's fine. You, you, you don't need to do this anymore. Even back then, Phil didn't need to do this. He didn't understand how HDCP worked, right? And we're going to see how bad this is because he's... He's using double splitters, so you need to know how bad that is. That will increase latency massively. Like Phil, Phil already has an input latency issue because one, he's not running in 120 hertz. He's running in 60 hertz, so automatically tack on another 18 milliseconds of input latency because he's running at 60 hertz, right? He doesn't have VRR, which is going to help improve latency somewhat right he doesn't have hdr enabled he doesn't have any type of features whatsoever because his capture card can't pass that through it can pass through 4k 60 and that's it no hdr no er no 120 hertz no variable refresh rate no nothing right so he is very limited plus the fact that he's using switches which is also going to increase input latency depending on the quality of the switch which these just look like generic best buy Shit, yeah, it's pretty much just generic Best Buy shit. So, like, yeah, like, yeah, the whole setup is just bad. 
connection, so I still need that to play PS3 on stream. And uh, that's my old HTTP VR2 that's broken. I should probably throw it out because it doesn't work anymore. The computer won't even recognize it. This is my HDMI splitter, which I hook my consoles up to when I am capturing from them. Okay, one goes to the TV, and one end goes to my Avermedia Extreme Cap U3, which sits. So it goes. So this goes into his PC. This goes into the switch, which then goes into the other switch, which then goes into the HDCP bypass. Okay. Right here. That's my capture device, and then that goes to my PC. Of course, here we've got a USB hub that has all kinds of things hooked up to it. Uh, I believe including uh, a mouse. Now this is a real, that says Radio Shack on it, right? Does that look like Radio Shack to you guys? It's not off in the comments. It looks like, it could be Belkin. Let's see if we can bring it up here. Let's bring up hubs. Box and hubs, USB and USB-C hubs. I don't know if they're going to have this exact model anymore. Probably not. Yeah, they don't have it anymore. This looks like a USB 2 hub because of the ports and everything on it. Yeah, so it's not, they don't have this on there anymore. A keyboard, uh, the, the old microphone, which was my old Samson mic, which I'm probably bored. See something. So yeah, it looks like a USB 2 hub. It's not, it is powered, but the problem is that each port is very, very limited to the power. We're actually going to, I'll recommend some hubs here for you guys to look at. Uh, the old microphone, which was my old Samson mic, which I'm probably going to get rid of now, quite honestly, because I don't think I need this anymore. So I might get rid of this. Or you know what I'm going to do? I'm probably going to give it to Leanna because she started to do gameplay again. He said Leanna. He said the bad word. Okay, let's, let's look at this right here. Look at the dust on that. That's the front filter. This is the Aza. What is it called? Is uh, GT1. Okay, we can bring this up here. We can bring this up here. So you can see here in the image. Yeah, cool. Good review. Okay. Get some images of this piece of shit PC case. Okay, so that's good. So we can see. So this is the front here. It fills. There's a fan here, an intake fan. Look at the amount of dust. That is caked on that fucking in intake fan. Like, I think we can get a better image. Let's rewind this a bit. Look at that. Hub. Look at that. Look at the amount of dust that's in there. Just take the vacuum to it, fill and vacuum it out. Holy shit. And that's one year. One year. All he has it. He has it on a piece of cardboard. No, Phil. No. Get it off the fucking floor. Go get a table from Ikea or whatever and put it in the corner there and put it on that cable. You're getting all the cat hair, all the dust and everything. It's just going in from the bottom. Ugh. That has all kinds of key. I'm, gonna go, I'm probably going to give it to Leanna because she started to do gameplay again. And she needs a better mic. Uh, and, you know, a few other things. The webcam's plugged into that. Here we've got an external hard drive where I'm backing up all of my videos on a daily basis. A pretty crazy freaking setup. Of course, this is my PC, my modem, all that stuff sitting here. See if we, is the Liana nudes on the desktop? I don't know. I can't see. Uh, out of control. Pretty out of control. The amount of shit that I have in this one little cramped ass office. Uh, I know. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, hold on, hold on. Psycho Dad's gonna love this. Ass office. Okay, look at this. Okay, so he has a. He's got a adapter plugged in here so to give him more more power plugs right okay so he's got one two three four devices plugged into that one yes uh i know he has oh we just missed that one there let's go back let's go right there damn it right there okay so he's got another one here this could be a gfi protector as well so he has one two three 
devices plugged into that. And then he has an overloaded power bar right here. Look at that power bar. Everything is plugged in. Everything. That's all loaded too. And that's a monster. He got, he got fucking gypped on that one. He bought a monster power brick. Probably paid through the ass for that one. Hold on, I want to say it like Phil. The ass. Okay, there we go. That's better. So, yeah, he, he got royally screwed on that one, right? Like, why you wouldn't have a UPS battery backup for your consoles, your TV, and everything like that is beyond me. I, I, I that That's just fucking horrible. And he doesn't have enough plugs in here, so he has to plug into here. Oh, my God. Now, you might say to yourself, people said this. Last year, I did a walkthrough of my office. And they said, Phil, why do you have so many wires? Because I need it. I need all these wires. The only thing I don't need at this point is this. I could get rid of the HDP. You really don't need all those wires, Phil. You you truly do not need all those wires. All you need is a switch that then plugs into your capture card. And then your capture card goes to your TV. That's, that's all you needed. That's all you need now. Right, you can get rid of the HDCP bypass, you can get rid of the second switch, you can just get a power center like a UPS backup and everything. A nice big one that plugs in there so that you can plug all your cables in. You could, like, look at how look at how dirty the rug is. Like, there's, there's shit all over the rug and stuff. This drives me fucking nuts. EVR2, everything else you see here is actively being used, okay. Uh, I can't run the wires. Originally, I wanted to run the wires around the outside of wall of the office, and I was told, no, if you're doing USB 2.0, if you're doing HDMI and you're running long wires, you lose signal connection, and it's going to screw the quality of your stream. It's going to screw everything up. Yes and no. With HDMI, you can use what's called an AOC cable or an optical cable. This depends on the power provided by the HDMI port. And even then, you can get HDMI boosters. Uh, I bought two for my to connect to my uh, my my PC to my home theater because I got to run about a 50 foot cable that goes to the ceiling, and then I have a USB booster that plugs into one USB port for power on the back of my computer and then it has a cable that goes into an HDMI adapter that then plugs in it supports HDMI 2.1 that boosts the power signal so I can get it across 50 to 100 feet no problem and I have a 50 footer and then a 30 foot HDMI cable that runs from my home receiver up my or through my wall up through my ceiling and then a ceiling mounted projector and that has also a booster on it. So you really could do it very easily, Phil. Uh, it's just that, again, that requires time and effort on your part, which you are not capable of doing. And that requires investment back into the business, which you are reluctant to do. So I have to run these wires across the floor like this. It's the only way. The other thing is the PC has to be here. I talked to, I talked to when they were installing it. Talked. everything here in the office when I moved in I talked to them about where can I put the modem they said no the modem has to go here because they tested this wall and they said the signal strength on this wall wasn't strong enough for the modem the, the high-grade business internet that I have Phil has an issue and I know we've been over this prior and a lot of detractors have spoken to me about it Phil has an issue with the basically overall coax strength that goes to the second floor of the snort fort um he used to have a booster plugged in uh they removed that and then phil used that as an excuse to say that comcast was hacking him recently they've probably put that booster back in now and it is boosting whatever the issue is more than likely it's just whoever did the setup in phil's home when it was being built when the snort fort condos were being built they did a really bad job. They probably cut a lot of corners, really cheaped out on the quality of the materials that were used, especially coax and everything like that. Unless there's a lot of splitters in the wall, depending on how many illegal cable lines are run within the home or whatever, that could be an issue, right? And that could be what's causing the problem. Um, Phil could technically put the modem wherever he wants. He can just get a line extender on a coax and then just run the modem wherever he wants. It doesn't matter. I do that here, right? Like I have, when I moved in, I had issues. Shaw Cable, which provides me my internet, which is now Rogers. They refused to even install my modem. When I moved into this house here back in 2004, they 
the people that lived in this house prior to me had cable going throughout. They were, Shaw came in, they refused to install the modem. I just told them, leave it, I'll do it myself. I pulled out all the illegal cable lines. I ran one line for my modem and one line for the TV upstairs and that was it. I just have, I have the main line coming in with one little tiny splitter and then I have runs of 50 feet, two runs of 50 feet for coax. Did it myself. Very easy to do. Like, it's going to be harder for Phil because there's no drop ceiling or anything in there. You could run it through the ducting work. A lot of uh, ISPs will do that. It doesn't really matter. Those are the options. That I would have to do over here. And in fact, they said even this wasn't strong enough to do the modem and the phone. The phone's across the hallway in the other part of the house. I couldn't even have my phone in my office. Uh, this is the... I, I, I thought you never had phone, Phil. You just used the cell phone. So are you contradicting yourself here? Extension foot handset from the one that's in the bedroom because they said the signals in this house aren't strong enough. So this is the, the crazy ass, messy ass, fire hazard setup that I'm currently using uh, for daily work. Now, two things before we end this video. Number one, instead of this crazy ass giant studio mic stand, I was trying to get an arm like this. See, this is an arm that's supposed to attach to the bottom of a desk. It's like an extension arm. And see how you're supposed to do it is like that. A boom arm, Phil. And it'll hold the mic in front of your face. It has a boom arm. Guess what? It doesn't fit my desk because my desk, in all their wisdom, when they designed this desk, they said, we don't want to have a normal bottom, right? We want a curved bottom. But you can see right here, it's curved. It's not flat. Because it's curved, that stand won't attach to it. So I can't attach it to this, and therefore I can't use it with my desk, which is absolutely ridiculous. I bought it. It's only 15 and buy a different TV tray, Phil. Like, use a different TV tray. I, I, I don't understand the problem here. Bucks, so it's not a big deal. I guess if I do PC gaming, I can attach it to this desk since this is flat glass, but I can't do it over here as stupid as that sounds, okay? The other thing uh, is that there's still echo. You could hear, even in this video, you could hear echo in this office. So even though I am right now sitting here and doing vlogging and doing gameplay with this microphone, you could still hear echo. Some people have even said, well, if we're listening on headphones, we've noticed a difference, but if you're just listening on a standard speaker, it sounds the same as your old setup, there's still echo. I ordered $200 worth, that's 24 square feet of soundproofing foam, which I'm going to put up once it arrives, I'm going to adhere it to this wall behind me, okay? I'm also going to adhere it to this wall right here. So I figure maybe six to 12, squares here to fill up a big fucking goatee hand and a lot good that fucking shit did for you phil right right 2024 we can still hear everything we can still hear echoing we can hear everything that goes on within snort them right like that it's just badly set up okay so let's jump in and let's look at this focus right to i2 that over there. Uh, I don't need anything there. There's some meerkat music playing in the background. Let's bring up the actual Focusrite 2i2. So this is the front. This is the one that Phil has. This is the Focusrite 2i2 Gen 1. You can see XLR1. You can see XLR2. Now the issue that you need to make sure is when you're plugging in your XLR mics, you're going to want to make sure that your cable, one goes in one, two goes in two. On this one here, the XLR 3 is ground, 2 and 1 provide the power, okay? Set it to line if you're using a microphone, make sure you do not have it set to uh, instrumental. If you're using it for like a guitar or anything like that, like Sam and Piece of Piece do, then yes, have that set to instrumental. It will adjust the um, output as well as the software that comes for this device. You should really be using the Focusrite 2i2 software that comes with it so that you can adjust power and frequency per port. Okay, now this is the gain control. So this is what Phil was adjusting originally. He was just jacking it up. And we can see by the video, Phil has always had this set to 100%, okay? Not ideal. You should have that set to around 50 or 75, sitting closer to your microphone, and then adjusting your filters accordingly. Again, this only monitors the rear. We'll take a look at here in a second. And this one only adjusts the mic for the headphone jack. It's just just adjusts that. This is just direct monitor. This is your 48 volt phantom power. When something is plugged into here, this lights up red. 
indicating that the 48 volt phantom power is in use. We'll go to the next screen here. Here is the rear of the Focusrite 2i2. Okay, so you have two line outs for speakers and then the USB 2, uh, which provides power. Now, again, this is the main issue that arises for Phil. Because Phil's Phil got basically screwed when he bought the CyberPower PC, Phil didn't know what he was buying. We're going to look at that right now. So we're going to bring up the Asus X99 Deluxe 2. This is Phil's motherboard. And I want to bring up a rear shot of the X99 Deluxe 2. Here, perfect. Okay. Asus X99 Deluxe 2. And we're going to bring up right there. That was a good image of it. Okay, so here is Phil's... This is Phil's motherboard, okay? Now, the downside to Phil's motherboard, and this is Phil's fault, okay? We'll bring that up here as well, just to show you. Where's the IO shield? Okay, so this is Phil's layout for his motherboard, right? It's an X90... Oh, no, I'm sorry, this is not the right one. I need the... That's my bad. My bad, people, my bad. We want the Sabretooth X79. Sorry, that was the PC that Arturo Sanchez built for Kev and ripped him off pretty good. Yay! Okay, so let's bring this up here. Cool, there's these I.O. That's what I want. Let's bring this image up really quick. Okay, so this is Phil's I.O. here, okay? Now you can see here, these black ports are USB 2. The blue port here is USB 3. The problem with the USB 3 support, this motherboard does not natively support USB 3. It has to go through an Asmidia USB controller. This is not good, okay? The Asmidia controller is... They're not very good secondary controllers. The problem is, is that the X79 Deluxe did not natively support USB 3 at launch, okay? Now, Phil's processor does support USB 3, but he would have to pair it with an X99 chipset, which I just shown you. That one natively supports USB 3, meaning that it doesn't have to go through a controller and that it's somewhat better for power distribution. The downside to this is Phil is very limited on power that's provided. This is where USB crosstalk comes into play. Now, the problem with USB crosstalk is depending on how poorly your motherboard power distribution is, you can run into a lot of issues. So you look on this, right? This port here, one, two, three, four. Those four USB ports can support up to 4.5... Is so it 4.5 amps? Yes, 4.5 amps. The problem is, if you plug in a device into here, and plug in a device into here, and plug in a device into here, and plug in a device into here, that power is all shared between all the USB ports. Each port cannot provide the maximum amount of wattage on its own, right? So if you're using this here, you're using this here. So say Phil plugs in, like... The 2i2 is only USB 2, so those are the black ports. That's natively supported by the processor. That is what Phil should be using the 2i2 on, right? There's also a USB-C. You have eSATA and then power eSATA, right? You have network, um, firewire, and then your shitty audio. Now, the downside to this is Phil probably didn't disable the audio within his BIOS. You should not... Like, you can. It's not really an issue. But if you're not using the onboard audio on your motherboard and you're just using an external amp slash DAC. We'll take a look at some of those here that are better than the 2i2. Um, if you're going to be using a different sound system, say like a USB headset, a wireless USB headset, you should really go into your BIOS and go underneath other devices or advanced devices or whatever it may be for your motherboard and disable the onboard audio. 
That way it's turned off. The driver isn't loading when it goes into Windows. It isn't loading when it's booting. That is automatically disabled. That way you don't run into audio conflicts, right? Most new motherboards now, the onboard audio is actually considered USB audio. So it shares power distribution with your USB ports. This is an issue, and this is a problem that Alt Insider ran into. Alt has, what is it? The B450 motherboard? He's got an Asus B450 chipset, I think it is. Yeah, he does. And Alt had, he natively supports USB 3.2 and everything throughout his, for his motherboard, for his processor, etc. The problem was is that he had everything plugged in, and this is something you shouldn't do. Now, the universal serial bus, oh, look at that, look here, and yes. So if you look at this right here, there's an option here that allows the computer to turn off the device to save power, okay? Depending on the amount of power draw per USB port, do not uncheck this, okay? Unchecking this allows the port that can pull the maximum amount of power, right? In doing so, you can damage the traces on the motherboard. You can burn out the USB port itself. You can burn out the device that's plugged into the USB port or all three. Then you're fucked, right? Because then you're looking at getting a whole entire new motherboard. Now, Phil has admitted that a bunch of his USB ports are dead. They probably aren't, and I'll show you why. Phil's motherboard has a lot of problems when it comes to USB support. We'll bring it up here really quick. Let's go drivers and tools. We'll go to biases. Now there's not one, there's not two, there's not three, there's not four, there's not even five. There are six bias updates that ad address issues with USB. There are six bias updates. One, Two, three, four, five, six. So there's six bias updates that address USB issues with this motherboard. So that tells you how well the Asmedia controller is doing on this motherboard for Phil. So what Phil, what I can recommend, if you are suffering from this and... I recommend this to Alt. I don't know if Alt has actually done this. Let's go back again. Let's bring up the images of the motherboard itself. So we can see here, these ports right here. Okay. So the blue ports again are, are the Asmidia controller. What Phil should do is Phil should probably go and purchase a powered USB 3 hub. What he should also do is update his BIOS as well and update the Asmidia USB 3 controller. You just go to station drivers. Let's see if we can find a driver for it right now. All right, let's click on drivers. This is what I use whenever I need a go to for drivers. This is going to be the most up to date site for drivers itself, right? This is what I use. Whenever I'm building computers, I don't go to the manufacturer's website. I come to here first and see if I can find an updated driver. So you click on Asmidia. Let's see, USB 3.1, Asmedia USB 3.0 controller, driver, go submit date. So they actually have, there's a firmware update for the ASM. This is not USB. So right here, the latest driver for the Asmedia USB 3 controller is the uh, April 2014, right? Not really good but this is within the realm of Phil's motherboard. Remember, Phil's motherboard was made back in 2011. That's when it was first released. Phil bought it in 2014. He should have used X99. It would have been a lot better. So that would be an option. What Phil should then do, and this is what I recommend to everybody, Vantech. Now, you can get these on Amazon. You can get these on Newegg. You can get these. I think Micro Center carries them. So if you're close to a Micro Center there in the States, you should go and buy one. You can go and buy this from there. Now, for my setup, I don't use USB anymore. I do, but I use what's called Thunderbolt. And then on my Thunderbolt, I use... Uh, I'll show you guys here really quick.
Now I use an element hub from Cal Digit. I actually have two of these, okay? Now these two port, these two devices plug in. I have two natively supported Thunderbolt 4 ports on my motherboard. Now for my one hub, I have one keyboard cable, one mouse pad cable. And then I have my mouse plugged in here as well. On my second hub, this is the rear. It gives me three USB-C and Thunderbolt 4 ports as well, additional. And on the second hub, I have my uh, microphone. And if I'm going to be using my web camera, that's where it's plugged into. And then if I use my video capture device, I have two plugged into here. So I'm using, still using USB, but I don't suffer from USB crosstalk because I'm not using the USB on my motherboard. So on my motherboard, there's no USB ports that are being used whatsoever. It's just strictly on my elements hub. Now, if I were to use USB, I would probably look at something like this. I have this one. I have the 10 port from Vantech. Now this offers, this is a powered hub, meaning that it has its own AC adapter to plug in here, right? That AC adapter, it supports USB 3. Now, you can have these plugged in to just one port, and then that one port can supply all this. You're looking at five gigabits of transfer rate. When you have your webcam plugged in, your video capture device, your microphone, keyboard, and mouse, you're not going to come close to hitting that. Maybe on a external USB hard drive, then yes, you can hit that because depending on the read and write speed of the hard drive, you can end up using up all the bandwidth. You're not going to run into that. And because these ports each offer up to 1.5 amps and a total of 60 watts altogether, this offers more than enough power to power Phil's mic, his focus rate. Even though it's USB 2, it's still kind of flaky when it comes to power distribution, but it will work. This will more than likely increase the volume on Phil's setup because it will all properly be powered. He won't have to worry about sucking power from those USB ports anymore, which he's probably maxed out because he has so many devices plugged in. It won't be an issue, and these are relatively cheap. I think this here, the 10 port, is about 55 bucks Canadian. This Vantech hub, I love this. I have this for my uh, editing rig, where I do all my streaming and my videos from. That little uh, mini PC of Phil's, right? That trig key. I have the 10 port for this. That way I have microphone, keyboard, mouse, webcam, and my video capture all plugged into it, right? Don't have an issue whatsoever. No problems whatsoever with that. There's also the 13 port. Now this offers a little bit more power um, per port. I think it says 90 watts in total. Yeah, it's 90 watts in total. So it's a it's a it's a beefy USB um, hub. The other one I can recommend is from Sabrent. Now. I have the Sabrent as well. I have this for my home theater. There are some issues with it. One, it is a little bit lower when it comes to overall power. Uh, I think this only offers... Total wattage of this device. Because this is a little bit less when it comes to wattage. That's 90 watts in total for the 16 ports. The issue I've run into this, the only cool thing about this is each port has its own power switch. So these little black buttons are the power switch so you can turn off USB. The problem that I've run into with the Sabrin, I have never been able to get a mouse to work. There's, there's, there's a firmware issue or a compatibility issue, and I've tried various mice, Corsair, Logitech, and Razer, and I cannot get them to work on this hub. That's just my experience with it. You may want to try it out yourself, but I recommend Vantech. I love Vantech, the quality and the build. This just seems really plasticky to me, the Sabrent. Although it is a viable option, I'm actually going to leave a description in the description. There's going to be a video from uh, Linus Tech Tips that actually explain more detail about the USB crosstalk issue. Now, 
the issue with USB crosstalk is XLR microphones are designed to eliminate USB cross or to eliminate crosstalk, so you don't get that issue. The problem is, is that when you're using the Audio Technica AT2035 into the Focusrite 2i2, which then goes back into USB, you will run into the crosstalk. That's just unavoidable. That's what USB is. The recommendation that I can make, and this is what I have done for myself, this is coming by Friday. is I purchased a new sound card for myself because I am, like I said, I am going to be starting a second channel here uh, shortly, sometime this year. So I went ahead and I ordered the Sound Blaster A9. Now the A9 itself, this sound card comes with Pro Amps that can be removed so I can adjust the quality of my audio and everything. Now the one thing about this is this has an external or this requires you to plug in a PCIe Express cable for power, okay? Goes in right here. Now, this thing here, this is the external amp slash DAC that plugs in through a special ACM link port. It looks, it looks like HDMI, right? Now, this gives me full XLR. I get full 48-volt phantom power, triple microphone if I want to, microphone headset and a headset for a quarter inch DAC. okay now this will give me far better sound so this is an internal sound card that means i don't have to worry about usb crosstalk because i'm not going to be using any type of usb device i am going to be changing my microphone though and i'm going to be changing to the sennheiser mk4 yes and I'm going to be changing over to this microphone here. It's a cardioid condenser mic. It's going to be a lot higher quality than the Logitech uh, Yeti X Pro. Now, with the Yeti X Pro, it supports things like stereo microphone. I can push a button in the back and it's cardio, then stereo. There's like five or six different options that I can change. Do I use that? No, I only have it set to cardio all the time. So I'm going to be probably purchasing this for the new channel. So I'm going to be going a more professional route. And that is your best option if you want to use XLR. You're going to want to use a sound card that has XLR support that doesn't go through USB because you can run into issues. And most definitely, Phil is probably running into power issues. You've seen his motherboard and everything. You know that there are issues behind that motherboard. Six bias updates that require, that are there to fix USB compatibility problems. Um... Is what Phil doing correct? No. Right? Phil it Phil doesn't know. Phil doesn't understand. And this is why the detractors understand that Phil is probably one of the most laziest content creators there are on the planet. He has no willing willingness whatsoever to put any effort into Brunel Productions, into his streams. He relies solely on fans to give him stuff, to tell him what to do, then he'll belittle, belittle them for telling them what to do. And then he'll implement himself like he came up with it. Right? It's always been like that in the past for Phil. So Phil's setup, as you can see, is extremely, extremely poor. Right? From everything. From all the videos that we've done here over the last two years. He set up his TV poorly. His PC is set up poorly. It does support Windows 10. His platform fully supports Windows 10. He's just too lazy to update it. He doesn't know how to use OBS, right? He doesn't know anything about the filters. He doesn't know anything about the bit rate of what he should be running at. He shouldn't be running at 13,000 kilobits per second. He should be at around 6,000 kilobits per second to 9,000 kilobits per second, right? His audio is completely fucked up because it's just, he doesn't understand. Somebody told him that this is what all the best streamers use without knowing the ins and outs of that. A lot of streamers don't actually use that hardware this is a really good mic but it's underutilized due to phil's power issues same as his focus right to i2 now phil can fix it if he wants to it's just that again phil will not soak any money back into the business whatsoever right you know the side scrollers ask that right like how much money do you put back in the business per month he doesn't put he puts zero 
Okay, zero. That goes back into his business per month. Right. Phil's going to toot all these improvements that he's made over the last year. None of those improvements have actually panned out properly. Right? Like the webcam, yeah, it's because you just didn't want to adjust your image quality for your old webcam. This webcam has that already done out of the box for you, even though it's the identical web camera, just with a bigger viewing angle, right? That was given to him by a fan. Capture card, which he doesn't know how to utilize properly, does support 4K60. We're gonna be doing a different video here later on, maybe this week, maybe next week, where we're gonna go over him talking about how he thinks he's running his Xbox and his PlayStation at 1080p60. It, it doesn't work like that, Phil. The Xbox and the PlayStation only have two rendering modes. Okay, you have performance, which enables FSR. Then you have uh, resolution or quality mode, which will try to do native 4K, but at 30 FPS. Okay, you, it, those are the only rendering methods it has. Just because you set your console to 1080p60 doesn't mean that it's rendering at 1080p60. That's not how a console works. It's not a PC fill. Okay, if you wanted the PC, if you wanted to be able to have that line of adjustment, you should have bought a gaming PC. Right? But we'll get into that in a different video. So I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope this gives you more of an answer as to what Phil is doing with his setup and how poorly it is set up. I want to thank Fantastic Mr. Sam, Piece of Peace, and King Jad, as well as Meerkat for letting me use the music again. Um... They all use, Meerkat doesn't, but the other three both, they all use the focus right 2i2 or 2i4. They know what they're doing with the focus right. They, they know why they bought it. Phil just bought it out on the whim because somebody told him to do it. And now we constantly see the issues that he constantly has because he doesn't know how to set it up. It was just plug it in and hope to God it worked. But again, I want to thank everybody for watching and we'll catch you all in the next one.